You are the rock that we cleave to. You are the one who holds us in the midst of a world that is shaking. Filled with earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars. Waiting, oh Lord, we're waiting. As your Holy Spirit moves within us, around us, among us, we ask that you move our hearts. That we would understand the depth of the meaning of you. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. A grace to you and peace from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who was, who is, and who will always be. How important that is to remember. We hadn't sung Rock of Ages for a long time, and I felt like it certainly is what we need to hear in the moments of the day. And as we hear the gospel text for today, Jesus is pushing, pushing his disciples to understand the time has come. The 13th chapter of Mark's gospel is called the Little Apocalypse. It's the vision of what will be, and so this is just a taste. There's a lot worse things to come. <coughs> Right? And so the whole 13th chapter moves us in that direction. There's a story that was told about uh, the Lakota Sioux, and they asked the chief, what is the winter going to be like? And he said, just a minute, let me go out by myself. And when he went out by himself, he called the weather service. <laughs> and he said, what's the winter going to be? And they said, harsh and cold. So he went back to the rest of the tribe, and he said, it's going to be harsh and cold. Start gathering wood. So they started gathering the firewood, wood, and in a few weeks, they said, well, chief, is it really going to be that cold and that harsh? And he said, just a moment. Let me go out on my own. And he went back, and he called the weather service. And he said, is it really going to be that harsh and that cold? And the weather man, the meteorologist, said, oh, it's going to be a harsh and cold winter. So he went back to the tribe and he said, it's really going to be harsh and cold. we got to gather more firewood. So they gathered more firewood. And about two to three weeks later, they said, are you sure, chief? Is it really going to be that cold? So he went out and he called the weather service again. And he said, is it really going to be that harsh and cold? And the meteorologist said, chief, the Lakota Sioux are gathering lots of firewood. It's going to be cold. It's going to be harsh. Sometimes we need those markers, don't we? And uh, as we all know, living in Colorado, do we really trust our meteorologists? About one-tenth of the time, right? But Jesus is setting it up to tell us there's something around the corner. He's given us a heads up. You kids know this. We adults know this. When I was growing up, my mom said to me, do not run out in the street without looking both ways, right? Why in the world would my mom tell me that? Because she worried for me. Or don't touch that stove, it's hot. hot. You don't want to burn yourself, right? I'm sure there's a lot of those warnings we can, oh, I'm sure there's a lot of those warnings we get. If you don't brush your teeth, you're going to have... All of those things are there for a reason. And Jesus, like a good parent, is telling his disciples, what you see today will not always be. And sometimes things are going to get tough. And life is not going to be easy. For the disciples and the, the apostles, they're looking at these huge stones. These stones were about five feet or six feet tall and quite long. They couldn't imagine that anything would fall apart. But 40 years after they asked this question, the temple was laid in ruin. The temple fell down. The people were put to death. Jesus was letting them know that what you see today isn't always going to be what holds you, 
We have to be prepared. We have to be ready. We have to be watching. And so he tells his disciples, there's going to be more to come. You can look at the world around you, but what's happening? Let's see what the signs are. How close is the end? Now, some people will say, are we at the end of days? Well, yes, we're at the end of days, but I don't know. It may be a thousand years out. God's day is like a thousand years. In other words, when God says this day, God may be thinking much bigger, much longer than we do. We set our focus on 24 hours a day, right? That is a day for us. We are in the last days, but that day could be a thousand years. Yet what is important for us is to recognize we are always to be ready. We are always to be ready. Are there wars? Oh, come on. You can answer the questions for me. I'm going to ask simple questions today. Are there wars going on in the world? Yes. yes. Are there earthquakes going on in the world? Yes. Are volcanoes going off in the world? Yes. Are there hurricanes in the world? Yes. Are there tornadoes in the world? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. I feel like I've got something going on here. The reality is we're living in a world that is in turmoil. Are there shootings in the world? Yes. yes just around the corner. Do people cut Comcast lines? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, five times in two weeks. People don't care, but we are called to care. The disciples of Jesus are called to care about what's happening today. We're called to care about what's happening tomorrow, and we're always to be ready for the one who is to come and receive us as his. How ready are we for those things around the corner? We look at the signs. And I will tell you, all of us find that shaky feeling in our gut at days, don't we? I've heard people say, I don't even watch the news anymore. I can't stand it. But the reality is, we need to kind of watch the news. We need to know what's around the corner. And if nothing else, we take what Jesus says to heart. If Jesus were to return today, are we ready? Jesus is pushing his disciples into thinking about what is at hand. Where our heart is, where our acts are, where our service is, what is going on within us and around us that we might respond to him openly? How is our prayer life? How is our study of his word? How is our relationship in the family? How is our relationship with our friends? What's happening inside of us? And what is it that Jesus needs to be doing with us that we can look past ourselves to proclaim his word and his love, his love to those around us? Are we ready? That was truly the question. His disciples were looking saying, oh, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this grand? Isn't this grandiose? Isn't this huge? It's like going to Europe and going inside of the cathedrals and looking up and feeling as though there is no end to this. It's so beautiful. And Jesus looks, it's kind of like negativity. Yeah, it's all going to fall down. Talk about Mr. Negative. But it's a wake-up call to them. Something is about to happen. Are you ready for it? Parents, you set your children up to be ready for the world, do you not? That is your one focus when you have children, to keep them safe and keep them focused. It is the same for Jesus and us, to keep us safe and to keep us focused that we might look past today and know what tomorrow will be. And here's the picture. 
Next week's lesson, he will come in the clouds and everyone will look up and see him. That's a foretaste. That's a forecast. That's what's going to be. It's around the corner. Are we ready? Well, that's a stark, that's a stark message, isn't it? If you read all of Mark 13, your stomach will hurt. And that was written 2,000 years ago. Almost. About 2055, it'll be 2,000 years since Jesus said those words to his apostles. And we still hear of wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes the quakes and upheavals. But we also still need to be ready internally for what is around the corner. Now we are the parents. We are the people to spread the word that Jesus is returning. And these are the things we need to do to be prepared. As we embark on this next year, the hope is we would find ourselves being repurposed. That we would look at our ministry at Bethel and in our personal lives and say, oh, there's more and we can have fun and we can have joy and we can look around us and we can learn and we can share with others that God is at work changing us and the world. I need to be aware of the world, but I also need to be more aware of the one who is in control. Right? I can't live in fear. I can't live in trembling. I belong to the king. I belong to the creator of heaven and earth, and I am his servant. You are his servant. What does that mean for us? Let's joyfully share with others that God has it. That God's got this. When our life seems like it's in upheaval or the shootings happen down the street or there's people stealing or oh, whatever they want to do. Paint over the graffiti and the next day, what's there? <laughs> Paint it over and what's there the next day? <laughs> but don't let that deter you. Don't let that detour us. God has something in store, and this is merely the beginning. And you, my friends, I am a part of what will make this world better. We are here to make this world better, knowing who is in charge. I guarantee it's not our government that's in charge of the world. Praise you, Jesus, right? I guarantee it's not our state that is in charge of the world. I guarantee it's not one country over another that is in charge. Jesus' heads up is, you know what? The Romans are going to come in and put it all down. But ultimately, who's in charge? Oh, I got it. The answer, God. That's who we rest on. That's who you hold to. But you got to know him to hold on. So let's spend time this next year really asking God to reuse us, repurpose us, and make us who God wants us to be. So we will be a beacon in a very dark world. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that in the midst of wars and rumors of wars, of earthquakes, of volcanoes, of hurricanes and tornadoes, of fires throughout the West, that you, oh, Lord, are in charge of us. 
Take away our fears and our tremblings. Bring a smile to our face. <coughs> Let us know that we are your people in this world to love the broken, to care for those who are downtrodden, to lift up with smiles those who have fallen, and to share this word that you, Lord, you, Lord, have the last say. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.